We apologize for this brief interruption in the show. As many of you likely know, the Higher Standard Podcast is officially sponsored by Transcend Company. Transcend has been my longtime provider for both testosterone and peptide therapies, but they offer so much more. Whether you're interested in health, wellness, or longevity, it all begins with you getting your blood work done. A lab draw will help you get the numbers and establish your baseline. You can go to transcendcompany.com slash THSP. That's transcendcompany.com slash THSP. Or you can click the link in the show notes on any streaming platform and on YouTube. Fill out your information, and one of the representatives will contact you to get your journey started today. Now back to the show. I am, I am basically roasting. But you, you knew that. You knew that. You no, put it I on. did. I wanted to highlight the merch. It's got the big logo on it. Plus, I wanted to emphasize my chesticles in the show. A lot of people like that one. Yeah, the the uh, recorded in L.A. sweater. Yeah. Yeah. We added some new motion merch to the store, man. We did add some new mush mush merch. Mush, mush. <laughs> I'm so hot, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and we added some new merch, honey. You're a fighter. Yeah. Which I understand not everybody's gonna get, but basically I wanted something to support the female listeners out there. Twenty four percent of the base female. Mm-hmm. And uh Arun, <laughs> welcome back from Ohio, brother. Thank you, sir. <laughs> it's nice to have you back, man. How was the wedding? Uh it was it was cool. <laughs> did it you know you didn't really sell me on that yeah that didn't that didn't, uh, that didn't strike me as cool as the kids say yeah. selling yeah. Uh, the wedding was nice uh, it was a nice it's wedding lame. I didn't yeah. care for it um but it's also because I didn't care for the person I was getting married wow Whoa. shots fired early in the oh. show yeah. uh, you didn't care for the person that was getting married <laughs> correct and uh that person's name for the record <laughs> My sister-in-law. Oh, <laughs> what are you doing? Dang, bro. <laughs> Savage. Jesus. Do not give a flying fuck. Um, man, well, okay. Well, I'm going to have to send this to her now. Yeah, you want to you bring us <laughs> in? What's her name? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I'm not going to say it. I'm not I'm, doing I'm this. Not doing I'm this. not doing this. I'm not going there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, welcome back to the number one financial literacy podcast in the world. <laughs> I'm still in shock, but uh, sitting next to me, my partner in time, the one and only side, Omar. Thank you, my man. Sitting next to me on my left is my partner in crime. Chris Nahibi, welcome back to the show. And well, we've already heard from the the man, the myth, the legend, Captain PTO. Arun is back. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, that's a microphone. You're supposed to speak into it. I'm yeah, yeah I, was, I was on mute. <laughs> Getting you acclimated again. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I forgot what time we were recording. You did. That was weird. Dude, we change it up every single fucking week the last, like, two months now. It's been 9 o'clock every time. It's been 9 o'clock every time. <laughs> no, no. No, yeah. No, 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 it no has. there's been 8, there's been 6, there's, there's not. been... Nope. Wait, okay. So if you're enjoying this episode on Apple or Spotify, if you're on Spotify, I hope you're enjoying the new video that we've now added, right? You know, the way that's getting uploaded, just so everybody understands, is a workaround. Traditionally, in order to upload video to Spotify, you have to upload... Use them as a syndication service, which pushes to Apple Music and everybody else. And what they'll do is they'll rip your audio from the video. So if you're listening to a podcast which has video on Spotify, you're really hearing the ripped audio from that video portion. Mm. We've always tried to keep the audio quality of the show on streaming platforms like Apple and then Spotify as well, really top tier quality. So I was very hesitant to do that because our audio quality is slightly better for the streaming platforms and it's very meticulously mixed and mastered. We go above and beyond to really make it sound good. Mm-hmm. Not that you don't have a sexy voice naturally or anything, but I'm just saying. Yeah, we needs, all get a little bit of help. In needs post. to be enhanced. Yeah, you are enhanced. I am enhanced. Um, so, uh, I found out that apparently you can upload it after the fact and keep your streaming audio there. So anybody who's listening to streaming audio will actually get uh, a pretty synced version of both. It's mm-hmm. kind of cool. So, so if you're a fan of the show, hope you like workarounds. Yeah. <laughs> Or reach around. <laughs> or reach around. Either, Either way. Yeah. And if you're watching us over on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, ring that notification bell. Let's get this video out to as many people as possible. Today we have a great episode. What I want to get into is our boy uh, Humphrey Yang. Mm-hmm. Right? We've uh, shouted him out a lot on the show. Recently came out with a video that got some love. And we wanted to give it a little bit of a THS twist as well. So what he got into is... Habits that are keeping the middle class in the rat race, right? These are bad habits that, you know, the middle class are doing or, you know, they they can't break free from that's keeping them stuck where they are. And when Saeed and I were talking about the show uh, earlier tonight, we knew that we weren't going to talk a lot. First of all, there isn't a whole lot of financial data that came out this week. There was some volatility in the bond market, but all to be expected. 
And for those of you listening to the show, we wanted to give you kind of a fresh break from that and talk about something a little different. Mm-hmm. So one of the things Saeed and I were talking about before the show was I had a very tough day. Um, there's no other nice way to put it. It fucking sucked. And if I've learned anything in the last couple of weeks uh, by posting to social media some of the things that I do, like on a daily vlog kind of kind of style, is that people actually want to see the the idiosyncrasies of somebody's day, and they want to hear about the losses as well as the wins. So I'm going to tell you about some of the things that I dealt with today and about some of my failures, frankly, uh, as it relates to Humphrey's advice and some of his statements. All right. Um, let's get into habit number one. Mm. Bad habit number one, okay, is those that are not earning what they're worth. So the bad habit that he's referring to here mm. is you know, not asking for a raise or maybe – staying too long at one job and not looking to jump over into another job, you know, in the, in the, in the same industry, um, because, you know, we've been taught, a lot of people have been taught that if you work hard and you stay at your job, you'll get that promotion, you'll get that pay increase. And typically what that looks like is somewhere around 2 to 3 to 5%, right? Which in, ideally during, you know, good or normal economic times, you're just keeping up with inflation, right? And maybe getting a little bit more, Right. But unfortunately, for, for most people, like, it's, it's not enough. And you do get pigeonholed because if a business is being ran properly, right, at the end of the day, the business will get more revenue out of each employee than it costs them for that employee, right? Naturally speaking, that's just the way they, they remain profitable, right? Right. Um, and in uh, Humphrey's video, he actually pulled up this chart, and I actually went and downloaded it too. This is from HowMuch.net, which I thought was really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. These are the uh, – now, I get it. This is the tech industry, right? But the top 20 tech companies by revenue per employee. Oh, okay. So if you look at it, look at Apple over there. For yeah. every employee that they have – now, every employee does not make them this much money, but if you break down their, you know, their revenue on a per-employee basis, each employee – generates them 1.9 million dollars yeah and so and let's just be clear generates the company 1.9 million dollars not the employee 1.9 million exactly to be clear but exactly yeah. um this has been a big mistake in my career in retrospect and i think a lot of people would see my position and what i've done publicly and say well, how could you feel that way and i, I think by nature i'm much more entrepreneurial than corporate American jobs are. But as all of us do, is you get caught up in something. When I originally started at the company, we started the bank, I didn't think it was gonna be longer than a three to five year plan. And it wound up being now 17 years. And I'm at the top of the food chain from a corporate hierarchy standpoint. But at the same time, I've been the victim of some of that pigeonholing. Because if you think about it from a company's perspective, a company is not a person, it's an entity. So why would a company pay you considerably more to do a job? And I've often had the mantra that I've told of the people that has been very personal to me, and I still believe it's true to this day. The quickest way to move up in any company is to change companies. Mm -hmm. It's because you can get labeled a certain type of way. We worked with somebody a long time ago who was uh, a former babysitter of one of the executives. And she was labeled that behind her back constantly. I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's right. People grow up, people mature, people learn. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's incumbent upon them to prove that out. But a company, an ecosystem of people who got to know you at a very early age are going to hold on to some of those early first impressions of you. It's not just human behavior. Just human natural behavior. So... Despite all of those things, I've been able to grow in my career, and a lot of it had to do with luck. But I can tell you right now, and, and I know this is going to sound unappreciative, and I don't want it to sound that way. I make a great deal of money. I'm very happy with the fact that I've been able to do what I've been able to do. But I would be lying to myself and lying to anybody listening if I didn't know that I was significantly underpaid relative to the size of the company. Well, and that's part of this dilemma, right? That's part of this bad habit is generally speaking, when you start working at a company, especially someone like in your position Mm -hmm. where you you help start the company, Mm -hmm. you're wearing multiple hats, you're with the company, you grow, your skills have now outgrown 
disproportionately to the amount that you're getting paid. You're wearing multiple hats, doing multiple jobs. Yeah. And unfortunately for most people, right, even executives at companies. Well, humans are tribal. You want to stay in the same rhythm, the same path, the same tribe. And humans don't like change. Change is difficult. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you want that consistency. You want that wake up every day at the same time, go to the same place, do the things you're comfortable with because you've developed this Pavlov dog-like response to this is my world. Absolutely. and I, But I also think there's another element to this. There also is a hope, an expectation that, no, 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 these people will do right by me. Someone will look out for me. But that's not the way corporate America works. And sh- and yeah, yeah. You, can't, you can't rest assured that that will happen, unfortunately, definitely in corporate America. It's not up to just one person. It's not. And so like CEOs of companies, right? A CEO can tell you, you're going to be my successor. But that's not the CEO's call. Oh, really? That's the board's decision. So how does that work? The board, yeah. if you're a publicly traded institution, the board will decide who's the next CEO. Yes, that is a, their decision. This isn't a private company. Correct. Right. So unless you're at a small company that an individual can unilaterally make those kind of decisions, yeah, then you're it's not possible for it to be that way. You can be a successor, but you still got to win over the board. This is why corporate American jobs, particularly those that are publicly traded companies, get so political. Is because it's not just appeasing the outgoing CEO to be named his or her successor. It's also convincing the board, this group of individuals, that you're also qualified and up to the up to the task. Right. And convincing them that they shouldn't go outside and seek other possible candidates. Because it would be completely reasonable for them to say, hey, you know what, Said, I like you. You're a great guy. Yeah. But as fiduciaries for the company, whose job it is to oversee management, provide effective challenge, and to hold you accountable to the strategic plan, we want to go outside and see what other options are there, too. And then if you're still the best option, we're going to go with you. Yeah. Now, how do you feel, Site, if you've been at the company for 15 years, 10 years, 20 years, and they're saying, we like you, you're great, but we also want to see what's out there? It would frustrate me a lot because I know that I understand the fabric of this company better than anybody else. Mm-hmm. To say that somebody else can come in and just step in and do this job better than me is wildly insulting. Right. That's how. That's exactly how I would feel. But I want to take it back a, a step, though. You mentioned earlier, you said a lot of uh, why you are or where you are right now had to do with luck. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think so because you know, we know what luck is. Luck is defined by when opportunity meets preparation. And I think that's unfair to the listeners for you to write it off as luck because it's not true. I'll say this to anybody. You're one of the most prepared people at all times. You you know all the different variables being played at all times. You, you're also learning. You're constantly adapting and evolving and learning. That's that c- preparing yourself. <laughs> that comes from fear. I've been poor. I don't want to go back. Mm-hmm. Um, it comes from a deep-seated inadequacy. I didn't come up with the educational pedigree that I think – I probably would have had had I had more of an appreciation for school. I mean, the Yale Global Executive Leadership Program notwithstanding, I didn't have a good experience in school. I wasn't very dedicated to it. I struggled in school because I struggled to see the value in the things that I was learning. Mm -hmm. And um, looking back on it, I wish I could convince myself back then the value of the education, especially from a networking perspective. But let me tell you where all these things wind up being very big negatives as much as you might see them as a positive. We talked about this before. I was in depositions for the last two days. And uh, it's still ongoing, so I'm not going to name any specifics. But I will tell you specifics as it relates to some of the things that were said to me. Throughout my career, the things that I have done to prepare myself from an entrepreneurial perspective, from a learning perspective, have never been looked at as a good thing. As a matter of fact, people who are older, more experienced, often more wealthy than me, have largely openly criticized me for doing a lot of the things that I thought helped prepare me for the next opportunity. Really? So in today's depositions, which is about a wrongful termination matter, I made the decision to part ways with a particular individual. And I posed a question to that individual, can you work with your direct supervisor? You or the the bank as a whole? I did as a representative of the bank. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, and I chose to do this in response to me being brought in by this individual with some information that I had to look into. So as a fiduciary for the company, we, did, we conducted an investigation, and I couldn't find anything that was wrong. The accusations were essentially meritless. 
And I then circled back with this individual and said, hey, we haven't found anything. I know there's some natural tension between you and this other person. Can you work with this person? And they were quiet for a brief moment. And they were thoughtful. You could see they were thinking about it. They turned to the camera, this is over a Zoom, and said no. Now, if you're telling me you can't work with the person who's the head of a division, right? you're basically saying you can't work with a company anymore. <laughs> and you're yeah, exactly. There's no way I can insulate you from that risk, mm -hmm. right? So I decided that it was best to part ways. And we are now in litigation about a year or two, two years later um, over wrongful termination claim. That being said, the attorney who deposed me today spent the first hour and a half attacking my character. Your character? My character. Specifically, he, he spent a very narrow window of time going over my education, but then said, you have a real estate company. Here's your real estate company's website. Mm -hmm. Explain this to me. Explain that to me. None of this has any bearing on why I terminated this individual. Right. His words, not mine. Uh, I like to, I believe that this person self-selected personally, but he kept accusing me of terminating him. I, I believe the claim for wrongful termination is wildly meritless, but that being said, he spent the first hour, hour and a half just grilling me on, you have a general contractor's license. Hmm. Why do you have that? Yeah. Have you ever worked on other people's homes? Have you thought about what, what are the angles here that, that you think that, it, like, uh, what, what type of slip-up was was he or she hoping for? So he's a very reputable attorney, uh, and I, believe it or not, know his firm very well. And um, I think part of it was designed to get under my skin, to get me agitated, so that whenever I did answer questions that were more on point to the topic, that I would be already a frustrated um, deposition. Oh, what a dirty game. It's a very dirty game. And to me, I've been deposed by somebody that was very aggressive. We had an active shareholder a while back, and the attorney that deposed me for it could not have been a better human being. If you want to be deposed by him, he didn't play any games. He was very forthcoming. He wasn't frustrated. It wasn't personal. He was just asking my questions. Matter of fact, he was very conscientious of the breaks and timing. A lot of attorneys will play that stuff against you. Like, oh, you have to go to the bathroom. We'll take a break in a couple minutes. Let's go through a couple more questions. <laughs> they do that all the time. Sleeps bags. Dude. Very routine. So, but this guy took a tack that I thought was wildly bush league. Goes through an hour and a half of this, and my attorney knows that I'm also an attorney, so she's letting me go because we're, you know, I'm being challenging and I'm responsive and polite up into a point. He got all the way through to my law firm, to my real estate company, to my sister being involved, to have you ever made money on anybody else's properties. Mind you, this has nothing to do with the company with which that terminated this individual. And what are you allowed to ask? Why are you asking me this line of questioning? Technically speaking, no, but I did pose a question to him. I said, my character is not on trial here. And I didn't say this to him, but this is not even a jury trial or a judge bench trial. This is <laughs> this is um, an arbitration. Mm. And here's the problem with California is if you open the door to attacking my character, you now bring in the ability to attack your client's character, which you don't want me to do in this circumstance because there's a lot of bad things out there on the horizon. Mm -hmm. It got all the way down to the point where he slapped in front of me a lawsuit that I had filed for Black Crown. Uh, I own Black Crown Inc., Black Crown Law APC. It's the law firm of the real estate company. But I had filed a lawsuit against Anheuser-Busch. Oh, that's right. That's right. So for those of you who remember Anheuser-Busch's Black Crown beer, you were listening to the, to the reason that it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Yeah. So we had a, a little bit of a dispute, and I filed a case in federal court on behalf of my company. I did it on behalf of myself. Yeah. And it was resolved. I'm not allowed to discuss the terms with which it was resolved. Mm -hmm. But if you go to blackcrown.com, not blackcrowninc.com, which is mine, blackcrown.com, it goes to nothing. It is still owned by Anheuser-Busch to this day, but it's not allowed to point to anything. Mm -hmm. And that's all I can say on the matter. Yeah. That being said, he put that in front of me uh, for the deposition and was about ready to attack me on questions about what was said in the lawsuit, asking me if that's my signature, and so on and so forth. My attorney had had enough. She said, this is harassing my client. It's an absolute invasion of, of his privacy, and there is no relevance here. And he says it goes to the relevance of his character. Meanwhile, he won't look me in the eye while he says this. And this is an hour, an hour and a half in to a deposition about a completely different matter. And 
I sat here and thought to myself, so when your attorney objects, you still answer the question. The objection is just noted on the record. This is all recorded on video and audio. And I sat here and thought to myself, like, all these things that I've done that should be looked at as, wow, like, we, we, he went over my, my how, when you were, when you were working for the bank and you were studying for the bar, how were you studying for the bar while you were working for the bank? What was your schedule? I could answer that question. Yeah, I know. I told him, I said, I worked 16 hours a day mm -hmm. for six months and I didn't take a single break. Yeah, like you were coming into the office at like 5 a.m., studying till about 7 a.m., 8, 8 a.m. About 8, yeah. Then, yeah, then working all day and then freaking... Studying at night, leaving the office at like 10 p.m. Like, later, <laughs> yeah, later, later, later p.m. I'd come in and work every single day all weekend. Yeah, and and that's just what I did for six months with zero breaks. Yeah, and instead of people looking at the things that I've done, oh, this guy went to law school. He got you know started a law firm. I told him, I said, my law firm does all pro bono work. Like I don't get paid for this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of him going like, wow, his only comment was, so you don't sleep, huh? And I'm sitting here thinking, like, what what a strange fucking world that we live in that you, number one, feel entitled in a setting like this where I'm, I'm obligated to answer questions to attack my personal life for no other reason than to try to validate your client for reasons that you don't even give me the dignity of explaining. Mm -hmm. If you want to call me a liar or a bad person or a bad corporate fiduciary— what does it have to do with your client under your words being terminated or my words being separated with? Yeah. It has nothing. And then I realized there are people in the community who've wanted me to fail for years, people who are worth tens of millions of dollars who who've worked with this guy before in the past, and it's all connected. Oh, wow. And he took an opportunity under oath to attack me for no other reason than they always wanted to know what was going on at these things because they've always accused me of stealing clients from the bank. Oh, wow. Which couldn't be farther from the truth. Yeah. Unbelievable, man. Well, a lot of it's in a lot of this plays right into, you know, the third habit that Humphrey was talking about, um, yeah. which is, you know, we'll we'll skip over habit number 2 since it plays right into habit number 3, solely relying on one income. And so this has been my same philosophy since the first book I read. We've talked about on the show, Robert G. Allen's Multiple Streams of Income. Mhm. Mm I've always thought if it's not a conflict of interest, having outside business, having a 5 p.m. to 9 a.m. job was a good thing. It's the entrepreneurial, smart, healthy thing for you to do for your family. Right. I have been bastardized more times than I can count by people that I thought were respectable, upstanding colleagues because they've looked at the things I'm doing. When we started on social media, for example, I got openly made fun of in meetings. People were pointing at me and laughing. Mm -hmm. I don't hear a lot of that laughing now, but now they're saying, oh, he's more focused on this than he's a joke. Okay, one, at one hand, it was a joke for you people. Right. And now that it's getting attention and taken seriously, now it's a threat to you people. Right. I can, I can probably list off 30 people over the course of the last 20 years who have tried to get me fired for doing exactly that, having a second second activity to make money. Yeah, that's the problem. You know, it's it's really easy for people to a first of all make fun of somebody who's trying to do something that they themselves know that they can't or don't don't have the ability to put themselves out there cuz this is a I'll be honest, for me, especially for me, I know you do you've done a lot of public speaking, right? And granted, this isn't in front of a, you know, public audience. No, this is public. But yeah. I mean, when you're sitting in front of a microphone and you know it's going out to thousands of listeners, yeah. right? You know, uh some episodes tens of thousands of listeners. It's not easy. It's not easy because yeah. in knowing that it, you're putting yourself in a very vulnerable position. Yeah. Right. So as long as you know, something that we've taught and through through the but reps, that doesn't justify people you work with no it attacking doesn't. you for it. If the internet wants to attack you because they don't know you, that's fine. People who do know you who attack you because of it, that's insecurity. That's a big difference to me. It is absolutely, and you know, people that find some type of comfort in, um, you know, attacking us for for something like this. It's just you're just ashamed that you can't you couldn't even begin to fathom, you know, sitting up here and, and doing what we're doing or anything that you're doing else on the side because you know what it's too difficult. Well, when the depots came up today. They were talking about the podcast. How much time do you spend doing that? When do you record? <laughs> Mind you, this has nothing to do with the wrongful termination claim, bro. We should start every episode moving forward. Welcome back to the Higher Standard Podcast. It is now yeah. 10 p.m. <laughs> and this is not the first time the podcast has been brought up. But 
so th- this is going to come from uh, an arrogant sounding position, and I don't want anybody listening to this to feel that way. I, but I, I want you to understand that you kind of have to adopt a little bit of this attitude. Humphrey's not wrong. You do need a five to nine. In a world where inflation is what it's been for the last two years, if you've resided to accepting your salary, in my mind, you have given up. I know that sounds callous. I'm not trying to be a dick. Even myself, I have not accepted my salary. That is, this is not the height of what I think I can earn and is representative of who I am. Mm-hmm. And I hope that no one ever feels that they've reached that. Right. And there are some people who, who say, you know what, I value time and my family and all. Fine. If that's the way you value things, fine. For me, personally, we shouldn't demonize wanting more. That's not greed. Right. That's wanting to grow. At our core basis, we as humans are growing constantly. We're growing constantly. Why do we get to a point in our careers where we get satisfied? And why is why are people demonized for not being satisfied? Right. If you're out there doing something that's not a conflict, if it's not taking away from your time at, at your work, when the fuck did companies own you? They shouldn't, exactly. They don't own you. As long as you're able to, you know, do your job, you know, the full entire job description, right? And to Humphrey's point, it's not just also having a a, a five to nine like, like we're talking about here. It's all, He's also talking about multiple streams of income, whether that be rental properties, yeah. whether that be, you know, interest income, whether that be starting another business on the side, the profits yeah. that generates, you know, interest income. So all of those things. And, and um, that, that's all stuff we advocate. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, I'm not saying you should have all those things, but at the same time, you should always be striving to grow and learn and build. Mm-hmm. Even if you start a company that doesn't make you any money or you start an investment that winds up failing, you will learn from doing that. Yep. Those failures are not things to be embarrassed of. You can be proud of every single fucking one. I started a company and it failed. I started a fashion-based website and it didn't go very well. Yeah, but how much did you learn? I learned a tremendous amount about coding, about HTML, about Google Analytics, about how to post stuff, about the industry, about clothing and fashion. Which rolled right over into this. Yeah, a lot of that rolled into this. I mean, that's how I learned how to edit video. That's that's how we get our video out today is on that from website design back in the day, back when it was Macromedia Flash. Mm-hmm. So for those people who were out there demonizing people who were trying to get better, let me just be clear. Fuck you. I love that. You know what I mean? Like, if, if just because you've given up or you think that that's, oh, you got to be doing that on company time, how about I'm not doing it on company time? Right, exactly. How about, how about I'm doing it the hours that you're fucking around with your family and doing all sorts of fun things. you got hobbies and shit. Good for you. Yeah. You belong to a club. The guy the guy opposing me today, I can tell you, spends a lot of time out at networking events, belongs to a club, has a whole bunch of social shit, and he probably does it all under the auspice of I'm an attorney because his entire ego is wrapped into that. You know what I am? I'm growing. Yeah. I don't want to be just an attorney. I don't want to be just a banker. Or just labeled any one thing. I don't want to be. I want to continue to build up my weaknesses. And if someone says, hey, you're a fantastic attorney, well, you might be a shit real estate investor. You might be a shit business person. Mm -hmm. I was once told by a board member, you know, your job is really important. You can't have all these distractions. And my compromise was simple. Okay, fine. Totally agree. Then buy my time. Yeah. Let's go get a comp study done. And you should pay me 80 to 90% of similarly situated peers in the market because you're buying all of my time. I don't want to be in the, in the middle echelon yeah, equivalent. that's fair. 80 to 90%. Yeah, you pay me the top tier to do what I do, and I will give you top tier to do what I do results. Yeah. Okay? But that doesn't mean I can't have a real estate portfolio. It doesn't mean I can't invest in stock. Right. That doesn't mean that I can't still tap into other income streams. But if you're saying you want me available to you more than eight hours a day, you want me available around the clock, which, by the way, I am. Yes. Yeah, you you, know? You've already proven that time yeah, and time again. time and time and time time again if you want those things and you want them in writing you want them committed then you have to pay for them right but people are like oh chris that's greedy whoa 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 let me be clear if anybody listening to this feels underappreciated nine times out of ten when you feel that way at a job it's because you don't feel compensated and people will demonize you saying hey i want more money they'll give you an attaboy they'll give you a ribbon Mm-hmm. Maybe you'll get a nice little acrylic plaque. You know, you'll be ch- 
President's Club. Mm, or get some fancy title. I'm sorry. All that shit means nothing to me. Yeah. The way you show appreciation in corporate America is you take that $1.9 million in revenue per employee mm -hmm. that Apple's making, and you say, you know what? We're going to give you, employee, more money than your peers, or we're going to pay you top of the peer group. Yeah. So that you do feel appreciated. And anybody who tells you that that's unjustified or unappreciated or unwarranted or you're impatient or you're, you're, you know, you're lacking vision, they're trying to push you down because they either can't do it or they won't do it. And that's it. Right. And take, just to take a couple steps back on what you said um, not too long ago was um, it's hard to sit and listen to somebody complain, right? Like, for instance, I would never sit and complain about a, a, the situation that I'm, I may be in to somebody like you, right? Yeah, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't. No, it's I'm not like, that you, you know. wouldn't listen, but it's also like it's good. It's good to be around some, you know, people like that because it makes you realize, like, I, the, I do have, you know, more capability. I could push myself a little bit more, right? Yeah, but I also I think every, every human's got a different level of output, though. Right. So I think what's stressful for you, stressful for Arun, stressful for me, it's all different. But if you're not happy with your set of circumstances, <clears throat> then don't act like there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, I think that, that's the, the biggest problem. So I'm going to admit this on the show, and, and, I, and it pains me to this. I really didn't want to do it. Do it. Um, no, not, not admit to it. I just didn't want to do what I'm going to admit to. Um, I've sold one piece of real estate of my own. My entire life it was a property in Mission Viejo, and I regret selling it big, big time. Because why? Uh, you like to hold on to the properties that you buy. You don't want to like, yeah. sell them. Yeah, to me, that's what that that's like my stock retirement. My wife and I have been spending way more than we make, um, because I took a fifty percent pay cut last two years. Didn't get a bonus last year, which is usually a big part of how you get paid in the banking space. And despite how conservative our lifestyle is, I probably spent in the last year and a half. Between five and six hundred thousand dollars more than I made, and I can float that. I've got the money, right? Right. You start selling down stock, which is never a good idea. You start moving money to spend in different places, and now I'm at the point where I am selling another property because I need the liquidity out of it. Now the properties wind up, wind up being a great investment, it's like three hundred fifty percent return, right? And it's I'm probably gonna, not something you want to do. Yeah, I've got a hundred eighty thousand dollar tax bill coming up, and and I've got to generate some more liquidity. And I'm looking at the macro and I'm sitting here thinking to myself like, okay, at what point do you start looking at your day job and saying, okay, this is hindering me more than it's helping me. Mm -hmm. And we are overspending. I know that, but I also didn't feel like it, <clears throat> I didn't feel like I should punish my family for, for what I was dealing with in the work environment. Right, mm -hmm. like it's not my family's fault that the work environment got really tight, and that we had to manage expenses, and we chose to do things like give up bonuses early and not make as much money. Yeah, and I still make great money. I think yeah. last year I made over half a million. Right, mm -hmm. it's less than half of what I normally make, but you know, still good money relative to America. Right, but we're spending you know one point one a year. Right, so it's, it's we're spending a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, probably a little less with taxes included, but. You know, I, I didn't want to hurt my family, and I, I care for a lot of people. You know, uh, my mom, you yep, know, everybody. Yep. And I got a whole lot of mortgages. And I had some vacancies come up, and things, you know, things happen. So I'm, I'm tapping into a bit of my own reserve, which is something that is incredibly embarrassing for the host of a financial literacy podcast. Not necessarily. I mean, it, it's a great example of why you want to put yourself in this type of position because if things do go south one year, right, it's still an option for you. Right. Yeah, and I've I've been floating a cash flow negative for two years. I mean, how many people can say they can do that and still live comfortably yeah. and still come out on top? And keep in mind, this this also included like building show cars and shit like that. I mean, I was spending like twenty k a month at one point just on that shit. I mean, the studio ain't free. Yeah, I mean, we, well, that, yeah, that was kind of the before I took the salary cut. But yeah, there there was a lot of expenses. Yeah, and and there still is. And look, I, I'm trying to manage that down a little bit right now, but. The whole point is, is that you, you've got to feel appreciated. And the number one stress we've talked about on the show for a lot of people is financial stress. Absolutely, yeah. I it, it never goes away depending on how much money you make. Yeah, you might not have to worry about how much money is in your checking account. You might have to check it all the time. 
But there are other stresses that come in when you start making a certain amount of money. And I don't want anybody to look at their starting point or their current position and think that they're alone and how stressful they might feel. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Everybody feels it in one way or another. It's all relative. Except yeah. for Arun, who travels constantly. This guy has jets in. It's just to the bay. Just to the bay. It's just to the bay. So back, uh, let's take backtrack quickly to habit number two, not exercising delayed gratification. Mm. Okay. <laughs> That's what got me in this trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Which, which is ironic because you actually do a good job of uh, exercising delayed gratification. I know yeah. you, you do that with, uh, I remember you did that with the Jeep and when you wanted to build it out, you could have pulled the trigger on a lot of things, but you wanted to let it sit in for a second mm -hmm. and really, really think it through. And I drove it for a year almost stock. Yeah, you do that. You actually do, I mean, with uh, buying some real estate, you know, you do that and um, mm -hmm. it's really important. So what Humphrey went into was in 1970, in the 70s, there was a Stanford study that came out, right? It mm -hmm. was the marshmallow experiment where they left a marshmallow in a room with a toddler and they wanted to see if they could exercise delayed gratification where they would say, okay, we're going to leave the room, but if you want the marshmallow, you can eat it. But in 15 minutes when I come back, if you don't eat it, you get two marshmallows, mm. right? And a majority of the toddlers obviously went and chose and they, they ate the marshmallow like right away. But then there were some that actually exercised delayed gratification and they waited and they got, you know, the two marshmallows later. And what they went on and they followed these kids throughout the years and it showed that the kids that actually decided to ex exercise delayed gratification went on to have better academics, higher SAT scores. And fun fact, some, one of the uh, kids that was in that study was a former CEO of YouTube. Mm. Wild, right? So, also out of Stanford, um, this is one of Andrew Huberman's colleagues, I believe, in the neurology department there. They were taking people who needed surgery in the brain that had to stimulate parts of their brain anyway for the surgery. And was uh, McDreamy conducting the surgery? Look, dude, I don't understand your references. <laughs> what do you mean? Come on, bro. Shout out to the for the, the longtime OG listeners that know that I'm a... Uh, Grey's Anatomy whore. So you do know. You did know. I didn't he know. I was about to say General Hospital. Yeah, yeah I was like, wait a minute. What, <laughs> what show? Um, I didn't know that's what he did. Was he a neurologist? Is that what he did? Yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't know. Ne no, neurosurgeon. Oh. So, come on, bro. My, my Rel apologies. Relax, I didn't mean to bro. offend your constitution. Like here, dreamy, okay? bro. Wow. All okay, right. well. In any event, um, the, it started off with the David Goggins kind of mindset of like doing the hard things actually grows a part of your brain. Well, they found a way to stimulate that same part of your brain where you exercise discipline, mm. where you physically do things you do not want to do. Okay. Right? It can't be like, oh, it's hard, but I want to do it. Things you do not want to do. Yeah. Really, truly grows that area of the brain and the electrical response in it. Yeah, man. You know, the like whenever there's the I go through those stretches where I'm really dialed in and focused on like working out. Mm -hmm. And if I do, uh, you know, establish a morning routine, I don't care who you are. Nobody likes waking up like at four o'clock in the morning to to like go work out. Okay, like in a hard workout. But every time I would do it, and you get I got done, I oh, always yeah, right? I always ended up feeling like like I had I'm gonna have the best day possible. So you'll you'll love this. So when they stimulated that part of the brain. Yeah. With uh, a little bit of an electrical current, the overwhelming feeling that people reported having, and this is very consistent from subject to subject, was the feeling of like a storm building, right? Like a storm. They all classify, almost all of them classified as like a storm building, but instead of being afraid and wanting to run from it, they felt like they wanted to run to it. Or through it. Wow, that's cool. And, and it kind of is a parallel to like when you do difficult shit and you overcome that adversity. So the whole, I mean, we talked about this before in the show, adversity building character. Well, it really does build character. And mm. now we're starting to kind of understand the neurology behind it. Yep. That's why, like, cold plunging and all that shit, like, you do these hard things that you don't want to do. Right. And it actually changes your your perspective on things. Yeah. It gives you that storm that you want to run towards. Yeah, it's hard, but I want to run towards it. Yeah. I want to conquer it. Right. And I think kids that go through an experiment like this, that exercise that level of discipline have a bigger portion to begin with of their brain that's firing here. Yeah. But they can also develop it by doing things like not eating the marshmallow, delaying that gratification. Yeah. Do you think it's something that could be taught? Yeah. yeah. I, th I think you can, I think there's some type of, we don't fully understand the way the brain works yet, but there's something about the way our brain functions where you can build better electrical responses. I say grow, but I'm not saying grow your brain physically making it bigger. I'm saying grow the mental connections there. Right. They've actually got a really interesting study on, um, 
super aging. I know it sounds uh, weird, but it, it's not actually like growing older, like older per se. It's growing older with better neurological response. Mm -hmm. So you're aging with better mental clarity. And they found that if you do difficult things and you exercise that same level of discipline, as simple as not eating the marshmallow, mm -hmm. things that you do not want to do, for some reason it keeps you sharper as you age. So your mental cognitive age is not anywhere near as old as your physiological age if you can do these things. Now, if you're one of those people who are like, oh, you know, everybody hates running, but I love it. That's not going to grow your brain. Yeah, yeah exactly. You, you know? got to you got to do something that's actually, something you don't want to do, or as Goggins says, something that sucks. Yeah, yeah. You got to say fuck. I don't want to do this, but I'm gonna do it. Yeah, uphill sprints or some shit. It, well, for me, it's just uphill walk. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> trying to blow my Achilles. So you know, this translates on on the flip side, right? If this is not something that you can learn uh, to exercise. Um, down the road, this might translate over to, you know, spending more than you earn, right? Or pushing off investing for retirement, you know, to later. This is what it, what it can correlate to or actually get tied to. So this is really something. I think the simplest place that you start is, is when you want to buy something. Yeah. Put it in the card on that website. Love that. And then wait. Yeah. I do this all the time. I did this recently. I did this uh, on Nike the other day. I wanted to buy. I was like, you know, I need... I need some new work shoes, some work sneakers. <laughs> I'm, like, justifying it to myself. I need some Air Max 90s. You know, the white yeah. ones are getting a little dirty. I need to get some new ones. I put it in the cart, and then I'm just like, all right, I guess I don't. I, I've, I've got a moratorium on shoe buying right now. I'm yeah. not buying any more shoes. But I, I do this all the time. I did this literally on Amazon last night for, like, a $6 item. I put it in the cart. $6 item? $6 item. Bro, bro. what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say you're LeBron? What? This is LeBron back in the day. They said he was he was so cheap that he wouldn't pay for the hotel like Wi-Fi or he wouldn't pay for the ad free. Uh, what was that one um, music platform that went Pandora? Was that one? Spotify, Pandora, Pandora, yeah. Pandora. Back in the day, remember they had ads all yeah. the time running through. I wouldn't pay for that shit either. <laughs> LeBron wasn't paying for ad free Pandora. Like, come on, dog. Yeah, LeBron wouldn't pay for it. Make, Cle make Cleveland pay for it. What do you mean? He still won't pay for X. Elon <laughs> Musk had to foot the bill for him. <laughs> He's like, I ain't paying, bro. I'm off the platform. Thanks. Yeah, peace. Yeah. No, I, like, I get it. But so actually, it was a brilliant, brilliant purchase. I wound up buying it and I used it. So it was six, that $6 purchase? Yeah. So it was um, it was neoprene luggage handles. So you wrap them around like luggage handles. Okay. The neoprene. I know you're thinking, Chris, like, you don't travel, bro. You cheap. You're correct. <laughs> I do not. Why do you need this, bro? Bro, let me tell you how brilliant this is, okay? You bought I, it for the pure brilliance? No, 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 no. I had an idea. I'm, I'm up because I don't sleep much, right? So I got up, and I've been really working on sleep. But the last, like, week and a half, I haven't been able to sleep very well. I've been waking up at, like, 3 a.m. So I'm up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'm like, look, this cold plunge that I have in the garage gets hot around it, right? Okay. And it starts to sweat on the connectors, which are metal. But the, the tubing is insulated. Oh. But the places where it sweats starts to drip, leak. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to have moisture in the garage. It's not nah, healthy, yeah, right? That, yeah. So I'm like, why doesn't anybody, because you can insulate the tubes and they don't sweat. Why don't you insulate the connections? So I found out how big the connections were. Mm. The same size as a normal luggage handle. I bought these neoprene, like, cushy handle grips with Velcro on them. And I wrap them around the connections. Guess what doesn't sweat anymore, bro? You love the I'm out here, dog. You love the reach around. $6 reach around. No <laughs> sweating. No drip. No drip. No drip. Brilliant. Yeah. I came home today, dry. Ohio, dog. Yeah. Just crazy. <laughs> dry as a room's nipples on a summer day. <laughs> what? What? They're, They're not, dry. not dry. They're not dry. <laughs> All right, let's get through this. So habit number four, not being aware of your own finances. We've talked about this on the show where you need to establish a budget. You need to find out what works for you. What best thing you can start doing is tracking your expenses. You know what a lot of people do, and I've seen this more and more in the last couple of years because of where inflation's at? People will avoid looking at their account because they know that all this stuff auto-drafts at one point in time. Mm -hmm. So they'll ignore looking at it all the way up until they got to pay the bill because they, yeah. they just don't want to deal with the reality. Yeah, exactly. So they won't log in. They won't look at it. The way I try to handle this is twofold. Number one, pay everything on your on your on, on your credit card. In my case, American Express. And gosh, forty eight thousand dollars last month. Oh, bro, you don't gotta be dropping these, these numbers. Are, it, dude, it these hurts. numbers are crazy, bro. It, it hurts me. You, man. You, you understand? A lot of people won't un begin to understand. Right, sorry. Yeah. In any event, um, 
pay everything on, on your credit card. I prefer American Express. Mm-hmm. Make sure it auto drafts from your bank account, right? But what you're doing in it is you get alerts then at this point in time on the mobile app via text message anytime your card is used. Right. I use that to stay apprised of my spending. Mm-hmm. It's a simple thing to do, and it's force-fed to you, so you don't have to log in and look at it all the time. Yeah, that's good. And I think, you know, starting the habit of tracking your expenses, actually writing it down, you know, creating a notepad, and then at the end of every month, maybe sitting down and actually filling it out into, you know, the different subcategories. I'll be honest. I don't know anybody does that anymore. I know. But if you can, this is one of those things that if you can train yourself to just force yourself to do it, for a month or two months, right? Actually, yeah. it, it's it's been proven that if you do actually write them down and track it, you'll start to second guess making the purchase. It's like counting macros for food. Yeah, Count, right. Once, once you do it for long enough, you figure it out. Then you can figure out what's got enough protein to get you through the day. Exactly. And then the other cool thing about it is, especially if you do it for month over month over month, like maybe three months or so, you can begin to track your progress. This is something that I've I started doing like with my kids. Mm. Uh, writing down their progress so they can track it so they get excited about their progress so and i didn't i didn't even let them know i was tracking it until i started seeing the progress we have a mobile app that carter uses and oh, he do? basically it's on his ipad and at the end of the day he goes in and taps the checklist and mm-hmm. it contributes these coins which equate to real world spending for him oh that's cool so he can he can say i did this today i didn't do this today i did this today and it also we we use it we use it so that he keeps himself honest yeah so we don't have to say, like, you didn't do this. He's got to check. So basically, he'll he'll hit, like, I did this. I brushed my teeth. I cleaned my room. I did this. I did that. And he's got a bunch of stuff that he's supposed to do. And then Joanna will go through. Without you guys reminding him to do any of them. Yeah, so if he doesn't do it at the end of the night, and you can only do it at the end of the night. Okay. Every single day, it'll reset. That's cool. At the end of the night, he has to go through and do it. And then Joanna has to go through and then verify that he did those things on her own mobile app. Oh, that's cool. So basically, he'll say, Mommy, Mommy, like, you know, I did all these things. Go through. And then when she verifies, it'll send him a notice. And he'll look at the notice. And he'll see that his account's been replenished. And it's and it's not like real money. Mm-hmm. But he knows when it gets to a certain point, he gets certain things. Like tomorrow, he's getting a bunch of Hot Wheels. Yeah. Oh, see, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we did it with like, you know, how many pages were you able to read in 15 minutes? You know, I so saw we're going to sit down, we're going to read for 15 minutes and no help from me. You're just going to try your best to mm-hmm. read. And then we'll start tracking, counting the pages. And over the, you know, course of like two, three months, you know, that number grows and they're like, holy cow. Like they start to feel confident. Like, oh, I'm a better reader now. Yeah. Or like with, um, with Adam recently, you know, we taught him how to tie his shoes and we, I timed him. And then I timed him again. It got faster and faster. And he felt even more confident about it, right? So um, the, tracking these things will make you want to become better, right? And um, it'll ultimately improve, you, you know, your finances overall. You good with that? I'm good with that. All right. Uh, next up, habit number five, using debt to maintain your lifestyle. Jesus, we're touching all your topics tonight. <laughs> Um, That's hurtful. <laughs> all of our topics. Um, I mean, look, credit card debts at one point one four trillion at the end of Q two of two thousand twenty four. This isn't yeah. ties to any just one person. This is you know a majority of America. I think forty seven percent of credit card holders are carrying a balance month over month. It's bad, man. It's really it's bad, right? So we we talked about it on habit number one. As you continue to get promotions, or if you're looking to get higher paying jobs, right. Try your absolute best to maintain the lifestyle that you're living so that and in, in, increase your investments before you go and increase your spending. And I, I, I've always advocated for that. And um, despite our spending and stuff you know, that we've talked about earlier in the show, a mortgage payment's only 1700 bucks a month. Mm-hmm. It's 2100 I think, with HOA and everything else included, PITI. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really hard to do that. And I think we've seen this when we under it in a lot of people over the time is you've almost always see it's exceedingly rare to see somebody who hasn't inflated their lifestyle with their salary yeah it's exceedingly rare like everybody always buys into their salary bracket Mm -hmm. and it's crazy to me because it's that much more pressure on you to either get more money to be able to invest and save and build or you wind up doing exactly what we talked about at the top of the show where you just get complacent and you say, this is my life, I'm good with it. Right. Like, look, if you if you did get that promotion or you did get that pay raise or you got that bonus, right, before you go out and spend it, just do yourself a favor and say, okay, I'm going to buy some, myself something nice in a couple months. Mm-hmm. Let me just increase my investments. And I bet you in the course of three months, 
you're going to feel so proud of yourself and so confident that you did it. It's going to encourage you to want to do more. Instead of going out and now sticking yourself with that $900 car payment for that BMW lease. Yeah. Right? Like, that's just now going to screw you for the next couple of years. Right? Like, increase your investments. That BMW is going to be sitting on that lot waiting for you in a couple months. And here's a fucked up thing, man. Like, this, this is like... Friends can do you wrong without intending to do you, do you wrong. Mm-hmm. And I'm the asshole. I know because I'm the guy who does the opposite and I get, I get blasted for it. But it's really coming from a good place. You roll up to your friend's house with a Porsche, Ferrari. First thing your friends say, oh, my God, congratulations, bro. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm the guy who's like, what the fuck are you thinking, man? Well, you and Adam talked about this. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. Why? You don't need all this. Right. Because, you know, we've seen the other side of it, too, where we know the guys that are really balling. Yeah. That aren't like that. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, if they aren't like that, who the fuck do you think you are? And look, I, I get that there's a whole networking aspect that social media also is bastardized that of people who stick together in a community of similar interests, right? That's different. Yeah. That is, but at the same time, there are a lot of people who do make money. Like Adam's trying to make money off the business. It's different when you're when you're doing it like, to, as a form of a business. It, it, it's his perspective to try to ingratiate himself into the subculture, mm -hmm. to literally buy in and then build additional businesses off of what yeah. he's doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, Fully respect that. He's passionate about it. Right. right. But at the same time, I know a lot of – I go to Equinox every single day, right? And – it's not uncommon for me to show up, pull up, and I valet, you know, valet the Rivian. My Rivian's a piece of shit when I pull up. <laughs> yeah. These cats got Lambos, Ferraris, Rolls, all that stuff. A lot of them are younger than me. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at them going like, you're not married. I know half of y'all live in apartments. Time yeah. to justify it with Grant Cardone, set up to buy any real estate, whatever. Yeah. Right. And I'm looking at you guys going, okay, so you're living in the moment. Mm. You guys are living in a lifestyle where you're like, all right, cool, as long as I maintain. And here's the fucked up part. If I lost my job tomorrow, I could still survive another two years, another three years, maybe even longer than that, with no money. Yeah. Okay? I, mean, I think that's the key point that you probably left out earlier on the start of this episode. Well, yeah, but it, I'm also not trying to be bragging about it because I'm still, I'm still hungry. I still want more. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't want to seem like I'm poor, but at the same time, I want to acknowledge that I'm making some mistakes intentionally because I had a bigger, grander vision. Mm-hmm. But a lot of these principles are what got me to this point. But I see these people at the gym who are rolling up in, in lifestyles that look awesome. For whatever reason, if you're doing it for girls, good for you. If you're doing it for this, whatever, that, fine. I don't know, But the man. fact of the matter is you lose I'm not your job. You're doing, you're doing it for girls? Like, I mean, A lot of these people I do mean, it for girls. But what kind of girls are you? I mean, let's just be honest. If, if, you're, if the girl you're getting is coming to you because she's attracted to that, that's the wrong girl for me, bruh. Back in the day when Bro. I had the original blue check mark on Instagram before you could pay for them, Don't do that. I cannot tell you Don't how many people were DMing <laughs> that was me, the flex. dudes hitting me up, yeah. saying, yo, how can I get one too? They should have a, o like, you know how there's a trademark symbol? Yeah. <laughs> they should be the OG. O o OG blue yeah. check. So I, a lot of people would hit me up and be like, yo, like, how do I get one too? And you'd be like, what do you mean? First of all, it's insulting because they're like, oh, all right, well, you know. You don't really qualify, brother, so how'd you get it, <laughs> you know? And I, was, I, I just look at that, and I go, okay, what do you want it for? And they go, honestly, man, I just want to DM girls. I had well-known, like, D-list celebrities hit me up D with that kind of bullshit. Yo, man, I'm just trying to get laid, and it'll help me get laid. I'm like, this is, this is the world we're living in this right is now? Bad. This, is, yeah, this is bad news. All yeah. right. So uh, let's let's rapid fire these last two. I have it number six. Your boy Humphrey Yang took a wild turn here with this one, uh, abusing alcohol. Right, this is a bad uh, habit. The the forty plus year old Chris likes that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know you like that, especially the forty plus. I like how you just you're just rounding down. <laughs> I'm <haven't>, fucking. <laughs> God damn, bro! You you took several years off to get down you know, to forty. You know what the worst part of being forty four is right now <laughs> is that there's in the news recently. There's been an article which has been circulating, and it's had a couple different variants, although one thing has been the exact same in every single one, is I saw an article which originally said there's two points where humans age the most, and that's 44 <laughs> and 62. And then I saw another article which said it's 44 and 60. 
Oh, shit. So if you're 44, you're like me, this is the point where you age the most. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is the room pulling it up? Oh, we're going to pull something up here. Oh, it says, this from CNN, scientists have found that human beings age at a molecular level in two accelerated bursts. First at 44 and then again at 60. Damn, bro, I didn't know you call CNN like that. That's dope. Rune, for of all the articles you've ever pulled up quickly, whenever I was mentioning it, that one came up rap rapidly. He had okay. this one in the back pocket. I typed it out right where you were talking. I was like, that, that, that was hurtful that, that you were that keenly aware of calling me out. But yeah, I'm 44. Yeah. So look, yeah, abusing anything could be detrimental, you know, for your finances, for your relationships, for for anything, right? I'll but be I, real. Alcohol is outdated as all hell. It is very outdated, right? There is a social aspect to it that I I do thoroughly enjoy. Bro, we I, haven't touched those bottles. In we the haven't months. touched those bottles. That, <laughs> back, looking back that Macallan 12 is looking like a Macallan 14 at this point. It's going to evaporate <laughs> on its own time. But I think to um, to Humphrey's point, what he was talking about here is let's say you go out on Thursday nights, every single Thursday night, you drink, you're that much less productive on Fridays. You might take more sick days. Guess what? You probably won't be advancing. I mean, it's it's a snowball effect here. At some point, right? So my buddy Eric and I were talking about this the other day, and he was like, yo, man, I don't really drink anymore. I go, oh, me neither. So Losers. I, yeah. <laughs> so I asked him, I said, why? And he's like, you know, I'll, I'll I'll drink if I'm going someplace and it adds to the experience. If I'm going to like a winery thing with my wife and everybody's drinking, you know, I'm going to drink. Right. He said, but for me, I really like waking up and getting my day started. I like working out. I like being, you know, performing and trying to push myself every single day. And he said, yeah, that might be selfish. That might be counterculture. He said, but at my age, the alcohol affects me, dude. Mm -hmm. And I want to wake up feeling like a million bucks the next day. I'm a dad. I'll be honest. When it's a big setting, right, mm -hmm. like, a, like a big, let's say, like family party, I, I'm not that um, excited to, like, share a glass with anybody. But if it's a in more intimate setting, you know, like one, two, three, four other people, maybe I, I, I would enjoy it more then. There, there is something about it that I still um, romanticize. You know what I don't romanticize at all? Clubs. Club. Wait, oh, I have no. zero yeah, yeah, yeah. desire to go to a club. Yeah? Now, a nice, like, uh, cocktail lounge. Okay. I could do that. Yeah? I could do that. Where you conversate, nice little setting. No after-hour spots? What do you mean by after-hour spots? Like, like late-night after-hours. I ain't going to be awake, dog. No, we go take a nap, come back. There ain't no nap in the world. It's gonna keep me up at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope. I've done it one too many times. I, uh, I've been there. Yeah, I know how that party. You know ends. that movie, Crazy Stupid Love. Oh, I know it too well. That's his favorite movie. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. So Ryan Gosling goes to that bar every single night. Oh, that was you. That bar is is the ideal bar for me. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah yeah. Real mellow, spacious, cool vibes. Yeah. Beautiful bar in the center, but places to sit on the outside. Mm-hmm. And not overrun people in yeah, but in the also, movie. but like, he he wasn't married when he was going there. No, I know, but that that's the kind of environment. Like, if my wife said, "Hey, let's go out and get some drinks," like that's where I want to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. The fictional movie setting. The fiction <laughs> that doesn't exist. <laughs> None of that stuff's around. Yeah, Odin. That's his dream, bro. He wants to open up a spot like that. Really. Oh. What was that movie that we used to like? Takers. Takers. Takers yeah. Bro, that, hey, that was, was Hayden Christensen. Prime. Prime. Yeah, that was that was fresh off of uh, Star Wars. Star Wars. What, who was he in that movie? Anakin. Anakin yeah. Skywalker. Yeah. Idris Elba. Uh, oh. Uh, the guy from Barbershop. El, El, the guy. The guy. Barbershop. I mean, that's what he's known for. That's what he's known for. No, bro. He's known for uh, marrying an Afghan woman. Ti was in it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Ti was, was in it. There was one other one other guy, right? Oh, uh, Chris Brown. Chris Brown was in it, yeah. Chris Brown was in it. And it was a he was playing himself. <laughs> so no, because they were all suited and booted. He's, he's not playing he's himself. Not, he's not he's not other than wearing out. a suit, he was the same criminal he is today. <laughs> <laughs> all right, last one. Habit number seven for our boy Humphrey Yang. Not investing for retirement, pushing it off to the side, right? This is a bad habit. Like people think that you can always push it off and do it later. I can think about it later. I'll start doing it at my next promotion. Yeah. My next pay raise, the problem is you're forgetting about the viral TikTok that introduced you to compound interest. Yeah, and you know what the number one response is to your viral TikTok on my TikTok channel? <laughs> is that why would I wait until I'm 65 to have a million dollars? By then, it's going to be worth about 100000 And I'm like, okay, so you got 100000 Yeah. What would you have if you didn't do this? I didn't say put zero. I didn't say put all of your eggs into this retirement account. I'm saying you need to allocate yeah. a portion of it in there. 
So this this is kind of a pet peeve of mine. It applies more than to just this, and it's used a lot in education and in, in, in the same vein. People always say, there's no value for, for, the, for me to do this in the future, so I'm just not going to do it today. You don't know if there's value for you in the future. You could always cash it out later. Yeah. Right? It'll you, be there for you. You don't know. School's the same thing. Yeah. Unless you unequivocally know, and how many 18-year-olds know this, unequivocally know what you want to do for the rest of your life. Yeah. There is inherent value in school. Unless you plan on living a YOLO lifestyle and not making it to 65, I don't understand. And you're driving a Rolls Royce and you're going to Equinox right until you have financial trouble and then now you're going to 24-hour fitness. Right. Again. Exactly. So I think uh, what we established here is... um, I spend too much. Humphrey Yang (laughs) is better than Robert Kiyosaki. Oh, yeah. Humphrey, Humphrey, Humphrey seems legitimate and honest. Sound advice. Yeah. Yeah. So, Aruna, you have pop culture tonight? Because I have a whole pop culture thing I want to get into because I've been saving this and I've been trying to, you know, keep quiet. But I got I got something I got to get off my chesticles. <laughs> Just, Just, do it. Okay, let's go. I, right. Hijacking the pop culture segment. I, I am. This better be good. It's good. Okay. It's good. So, I grew up in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> did not grow up in the 90s. You, were, you did not grow up. In, you were already grown in the 90s, bro. It's a little hurtful. But okay. Did you have a stash in the 90s? A what? Yes, he did. Of course. He Early did. 90s. <laughs> Again, also hurtful. Let's stay focused, boys. Uh, so, some of my favorite movies are from comedians of that era Robin Williams, Eddie Murphy. Yeah. You know, trading places. Just don't make them like that anymore. They don't make them like that. 48 hours. Yeah. Right? So, of course, Axel Foley is back with a new... Beverly Hills Cop? Beverly Hills Cop on Netflix. It's already out? It's already out. Did you watch it? And I've been wanting to watch... It's been out for like a month or two. And I've been wanting to find the right time. I didn't want to do this while I'm doing 20 minutes of cardio and then come back to the next day. I wanted to watch this... All the way through A to Z. We should we should watch it together and stream it. And I was I was I was excited because you know Eddie Murphy has done some shit movies for Disney, but I'm like, all right, he had some undisclosed hundred million dollar Disney deal. They clearly paid him a lot of money, but he was a prime comedian. So he was talking about doing another com- a comedic stand up tour during the pandemic, mm-hmm. right before the pandemic hit. Pandemic hit, he stopped doing it. But then he did that uh, SNL. Huh? He did SNL. Oh, he did SNL. Then he did a couple of movies. That were Netflix movies, and one of them was good. Which one? The one where he played the uh, the pimp. I didn't see that it was one. Was Dolomite or? Uh, oh, you want to talk about? Yeah, I heard about. It. I didn't see it. It I was good. I saw the one with Jonah Hill. The one with Jonah Hill sucked. <laughs> yeah, it sucked. Yeah. So I was excited. There was possible a possible future with which Beverly Hills Cop, Axel Foley, Axel F, whatever, could have been a good movie. Oh no. I read some reviews. Did not say good movie. But still, I was like, you know what? People want to hate on on Incredible these sequels. Source, though? Yeah. The reviews? Yeah. Yeah, they were all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I uh, I finally got to see this the other night. And I got to tell you, it did not capture the nostalgia. Oh, because you know, why was it? I'm, I'm curious to know why. I don't think Eddie Murphy has the same youthful exuberance. That's a perfect explanation. Yeah. Wow. Good job. Thank you. I was going to say, because he... Did, I've seen him throughout the last several years, and if he were to play that same character, I'm not buying it. He, well, he doesn't even try to play it. He, he really? tries to be like a geriatric version of himself. Oh, no. And you're like, you're Axel Foley, man. He's got a daughter. He's trying to rekindle a relationship. Everybody's old. Is it a money grab? It was like that Bad Boys movie where Bar- Martin Lawrence was just like, I'm an old geezer now. Like. Oh, the last Will one? Smith, I, 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 running refuse around anymore. I refuse to see it. I refuse it, yeah. to watch it. I, yeah. I won't watch that last Bad Boys movie. I won't do it. Oh, yeah. no. You're talking about the newest one that just came out a few months ago. No, there was one that came out like two, three years yeah, ago. Yeah, I haven't watched that one either. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I didn't won't watch, watch that one. I was wildly disappointed. Bad Boys 2 is where I stopped. Yeah, someone's, someone's off with Martin Lawrence, too, man. It's, he's. I feel like his health is really declining. He's puffy. It, and some's, his eyes, something's wrong with one of his eyes. Yeah, and nobody respects Will anymore now. It's over for him, right? I, I loved Will. He was. He I mean, broke my heart when he broke Chris Rock's face. I, man, like you could just tell he's going through if some it was, shit. Honestly, if it was anyone else too, I love Rock, dude. I am Robot, or I Robot. I Robot. I am Legend. I am Legend. I am Legend Two is coming out, or is it already out? 
I, how do you do that? He died. No, he didn't. He was in that like container at the end. They blew all that shit up. They didn't show it. Okay, yeah, fine. Yeah, they did. They showed him dying. Like he him died. Like, they didn't show him dying, but thought, he like jumped out of. Oh, the, then maybe some. Uh, what he jumped out of. He put like that. No, that but wasn't there was kid in no, the but furnace. wasn't there wasn't there an alternate ending? They had two endings. I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah. You guys didn't. You were supposed to hit start start select, and it was supposed to. Re- up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, <laughs> A, B, start, select. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, dude, I, I, I don't know. Damn, what to say okay. So here's what I'm going to tell you right now. Don't watch it. I think this weekend, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is coming out. Uh, so I took the liberty of trying to get over my pain of Beverly Hills Cop by watching Beetlejuice again. It is still just as iconic today as it was when it came out in the 80s. Okay. Tim Burton is This is sad. Fucking I remember, good. I remember I remember being so in love with the character. I, I don't oh, remember what? anything about Beetlejuice. It, it dude, I have to go back and I have to go back and watch it again. It hasn't lost a single bit of value. I remember going to Universal Studios and like they had a whole performance and I would yeah. watch it. Yeah. So I decided to geek out on why Tim Burton is making Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice now. And it turns out he had, like, so he did Win- he did Wednesday, which starred Jenna Ortega. Okay. And he just thought she was, like, she he fell in love with her personality for the character. Weird, yeah. For Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And it's, he, he's creative. I mean. <laughs> you get to write it off. Creative. He's creative. Well, no, I mean, it's not like he's, like, in love with her. He just, he, she has a persona, which reminded him a lot of a young Winona writer. Okay. And she naturally fits the role she played in the movie. So she was, I think as a creative, when you find the right pieces of the puzzle, mm-hmm. you feel... Gets you excited. Yeah. yeah. Whoa, excited. It gets you creative. <laughs> Why you got to take it there, dog? Gets you creative. You know I got deposed? Can't be doing this shit. Gets you creative. Light, gets you to light some candles. Anyway, so he, I am, I'm seeing that movie, I think, this week that it comes out. I, I don't know why it's wearing the babysitter. I hope to hell... That can at least carry forth a little bit of that forward. Because if I have another Axel Foley drop off, I'm I'm just not going to be able to speak next week when I come on the yeah, show. They do man. this too many times. I just watched um, while I was in the Bay. I watched the movie The Crow. They made a remake of that. As Why well. the fuck would you watch that? A remake. You I could have told you that was terrible. I Did know, it? dude. I just need to get out of the house. I was like, let me just go to the movie theaters and watch something. It was only you went to go watch a movie by yourself. Have you never done that? Not when my wife's with me. Well, my wife was busy, like, doing no, stuff No, preparing for the, for the wedding, bro. Yeah. Bro, you got, like, kids. Yeah, they're with... Uh, the grandparents. Yeah. I, Come no, on, they were, they were asleep at this point. What do you got to get some going Whoa, to the movies what by time? So, What's wrong with going to the movies by on, yourself? Hold on a second. Let me, let me just walk out the logistics here. So you went to your <laughs> in-laws, and you're like, hey, guys. Uh, this is so fucked what time, up. What time of night is this? It's really not. It's maybe, like, 8.30, 9. 8.30, 9 o'clock. You're like, all right, guys, look. You know, your daughter's preparing for all this wedding shit that I don't want to be a part of. Kids are asleep. Kids are asleep. I need you to watch this monitor real quick. I'm about to go do a thing, and I'll be back in, you know, three hours. And they're like, all right, cool, bye. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Bro, I don't have any in-laws like this. (laughs) I don't don't, don't have. I mean, I couldn't get away with this. This is, but, like. I'm not crazy, right? You couldn't do that shit, Well, I wouldn't ask. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't ask to do it either. Because you know you get beat. but But I've also never stayed there for, oh, actually, I have. I've stayed at my in-laws for three months. I'm pretty sure there's no world where this is normal. Yeah, man. That that's an abnormal thing, man. Good, good for you. Thank you. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. So you went and what? You had like a hot dog. This guy needs to teach a master class. Yeah. On this, <laughs> give a TED talk or some shit. Yeah. So what? Oh, what did man. you order when you went to the theater? Well, I don't even want to share this because you're gonna fucking. <laughs> oh yeah. But now he knows where it's going. You fucked. You done fucked up, boy. No, no, it's all hey, funny. Hey, by the way, a listener uh, sent me a message said the. Its favorite line ever on the show was, uh, my name is Baboon with an H. (laughs) (laughs) It's your own name. I don't understand how that works. Haboon. He says, Uh, says my my hands on my favorite line. Haoon. So I get into the movies, and I was was hungry, so I was like, fuck, I want to eat something. So they had fresh pizzas being made, right? At at a movie theater? Have you been to the movie theaters lately? Fresh pizza at a movie theater? Oh, this guy guy went to one of those luxury... Movie theaters. He wanted the recliner. He had to find the one with get the wheelchair access. Yeah, exactly. Take yeah, that seat beep, 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 so we can sprawl beep, out. Beep, beep. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so I go and I order a pizza, and the guys are like, "Hey, dude, they made too many. It's a random Tuesday night. So if you want another one for free, it's like buy one get one free." I was like, <laughs> "Okay." 
So I got two pizzas. <laughs> like two whole pizzas? Yeah, bro. Extra large. <laughs> no, bro. They're personal size pizzas. Jesus Christ, Come on, Christ. man. What are you talking about? You hate, you hate. This apparently doesn't go out, but he spends 48 I don't order pizzas mark. from movie theaters, dog. <laughs> what do you, you don't eat pizza from movie theaters? No. <laughs> if, well, if you were to go to the movie theater outside of popcorn, what do you get? Well, hold on. When was the last time you went to a movie theater, Chris? Uh, two weeks ago. What'd you watch? It was three weeks ago. We watched uh, Minions, the new Minions movie. Oh, okay. oh, just pick with me for yeah, great movie. My son, you want all bunch of candy. Great movie. We typically go across the street to the grocery store and we'll get like healthy popcorn or some shit like that. Oh, we get um, I do Magic Spoon. Give them little pouches of Magic Spoon. Game changer. Yeah, it upsets my stomach a little bit. Man, don't you're not a health freak, bro. Don't be. Like- I'm not. No, my stomach is just revolting. I'm 44, bro. We just recovered that your body <laughs> changes at 44. <laughs> <laughs> On a microcellular level, my body's saying fuck you. <laughs> uh, I hurt my back. I don't even know how I did it. <laughs> I just woke up this morning. I'm like, that hurts. Then you got the BPC 157 for that. I know. I start, when I get home tonight, I'm going to eject my butt. Yeah. By the way, this episode is brought to you by transcendcompany.com. Go to transcendcompany.com slash THSP. Get all the blood work you need, and you could be two choices here. It's very simple. You could be Syed or you could be Chris. You want to be Chris? Go to transcendcompany.com slash THSP. Or if you just want to be a good person and support the show, you'll go to transcendcompany.com and support the show. And then you'll look like me, not Syed. Yes. You're welcome. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what are we doing? What's your? What, give us a pop culture to round out the show. He didn't have nothing. <laughs> what did you go? Where you went to? L. Weber. Did you guys see this? What the fuck is that? Luda? Is that Luda throwing out the first pitch? Why yeah. is his hand so big? Oh, but you don't remember? Oh, oh, come on! You shame grew up. on you. He was too old. Come this on, came out man. in two thousands. That's why. Remember, roll out, and he the music video. He's this big. Oh guy. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. But they put him in a suit. Uh, just the arms no, and- bro, that's his real arm. <laughs> Obviously, he's in a suit. What the hell's wrong with you? Hey, why are you fucking talking back to me like you understand? Bro. You're ripped in the back. It's part of Transcend. Oh, look at the watch, too. That's oh, sick. Nike's too- oh. I like how he's, he's... Bro, I knew he had elephantitis, dog. <laughs> look at Nike's. Yeah, man, the Air Force Ones. Love it. Damn, Love it. Chris, how do you not know this? What and, happened to Ludacris' career? What do you mean, what happened to his career? He has had an amazing career. He turned into an He's actor, and that's been it? Been able to adapt, been able to evolve. Yeah, stay relevant. Look. How look? How many other rappers have been able to stay this relevant for this long? Bro, he's like fifty something. Look at Dude, him. There's a lot of anger coming from the two of you. Let's listen, just, I don't appreciate. Let's back the anger listen, up. This is, I mean, Wait, this is he like looks younger my, than this, you. This and is my. Okay, so let he me, looks oh, very healthy. Okay, everybody looks younger than me, fucker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just got. I was under a lot of financial stress. You insensitive brick. Uh, Rip, but hold on, ripped. Jean shorts, not the move. No, that's actually, that's actually in style right that's now. That's not the move. Jorts are in style right now. I know you don't like this. No, but ripped? Dude, you know what's coming back is Janko jeans. They're back. I know, with the, with the super skinny like waistline for people because they can't fit in them. But the, no, no, the yeah. giant pant legs. Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, those are back. So you fit an entire Game Boy. But back like, in the... <laughs> PlayStation in the back of your pocket. <laughs> back in the... I know. Back in the day... Um, People were sagging with it. Sagging's still not back, though. I don't think sagging will ever come back. No, but It'll crop tops back. are back. It'll come back. Crop tops So you back. get the same sagging effect with some of these dudes because they're wearing crop top shirts yeah. with normal waisted jeans, but their underwear pulled up, so it looks like they're sagging, but I had a higher plane. It's very logistically challenging to me. <laughs> yeah, like, come on. That's a lot of effort, bro. My favorite white boy haircut right now is that fluffy, like, moppy-looking top thing that curls That's- up that all these dudes got. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm talking about, right, Arun? Yeah, yeah. and, they, and yeah. They, they look like they And they got- all bite their lip like this? Yeah, they look like they they got the 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 Jerry the Jerry <laughs> curl from Coming to that. America. Yeah, <laughs> drip, 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 drip. <laughs> Just makes your soul go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. One of the best movies Eddie Murphy has ever done. Oh yeah, hands down. Yeah, hands down, classic. Can I watched we... that again recently too. You cannot make that movie anymore. No, the, yeah, absolutely. What's this? Oh right. yeah. I was excited, but then kind of confused by this. But oh, I never watched. Every this, so character is confirmed to be re- returning for Ted Lasso season four. You of all people, I don't know why you haven't watched. He Ted doesn't Lasso. watch shows or movies that have to do with so sports. I, I want. I don't. Yeah, it's weird when it's when it's like fictional. Then it's like this is a fantastic series for Saeed Omar. Like watch. I'll be honest, this is this is a wild hot take. I'm about to upset a lot of people. Oh God, I'm not a huge fan of Remember the Titans. I hate that fucking movie. Yeah, right. It's the like worst. It's, it's but like I know it's, for a lot of people it's, it's like gospel. It's Wait, football. Why do you hate it though? Because it sucked. I don't like. Yeah, I don't. I just it's, there it, was nothing good about it. 
Yeah. No, I mean, okay. <laughs> there is a lot of good stuff about it. Be careful. <laughs> there is nothing good about <laughs> it. Tread carefully, bro. Uh, no, the fact that they brought black people and white people together, that part was really good Whoa, about it. Yeah, why yeah. why yeah. has it got to be racial, dog? Well, you said, movie. wait, you said there was nothing good about it. That we, we both agree that there's there are good things about it. It was an anticlimactic, predictable film. Yeah, Denzel, I've seen you do better, and it's like, it's too fictional, man. Can I be honest? Can Denzel start playing an old man now? Like, like I don't want to see. Wait, is, is it in, in Gladiator? He's playing the old man. In yeah, Gladiator. Gladiator. I could probably see him working. I've seen some of the clips, and that looks good. But I don't need to see Equalizer 15. Bro, that's such a dumb thing. He takes his phone. He takes his watch out. And he's like, "All right, 15 seconds. Like, I'll kill these bro, eight people." And now he's not- doing this thing with his lips, and he looks like he's like gumming his gums with his dentures. He's like, mm-hmm. yeah. "Yeah, bro, <laughs> listen." And it's like, stop doing it, bro. I see what you're doing, Mr. Washington, but you are not John Wick. Okay, John Wick is John Wick. You can't yeah. cross over into that lane. And here's the thing is that you could tell Keanu Reeves when he does John Wick. Like, he's training for weapons training. Yeah. yeah. Like, he looks like he's actually used he's, weapons Yeah, he's before, been right? training since the Matrix, bro. Like, he's I don't very know if you know comfortable. This, like, you know John Wick's, like, spin where he, like, spins out the clip? No. And okay. So, so and during the John Wick movies, Keanu Reeves literally started firing out, out a clip, emptying it right, and then he would hit the switch to release the clip and then flick it out and then pop in another one like this, mm-hmm. he actually developed that and started doing that on his own. Like, that's something he was just doing. He improved it? He improv. Well, no, he was doing that because he was training for the film, and that's how he would empty the clip and reload. But that was his own reloading style he brought to the movie. Wow. You can tell Denzel Washington's never actually done any of this stuff. Damn. Yeah, it, Keanu Reeves had to put some legitimate... Is this... Oh, this is... No, this is the... Yeah, there you go. This, this oh, is a flick. This? Where he, like, flicks it out. Yeah, this is... This yeah. how we, This is how we get flagged for this episode. Ruins literally listening to the episode in the room. <laughs> He's like, you even here, bro? <laughs> I have no idea what's happening. It's like the volume's on the on Yeah, the computer. but I saw yeah. it. Yeah. That's all right. We'll yeah. play it. We'll play in post. Yeah. Um, mm. What? Yeah. I know. Hot take. Remember the Titans. I know I'm going to get it. I'm gonna I don't watch lot. sports as it is. I'm I don't want to watch a I'm movie gonna, about get, sports. I'm going to get a lot of heat for that. You know what? People, you got to be careful, man. You got you, you also, like, when you say shit like that, what? I don't watch sports at all as it is, and you're downplaying sports. Bro, sports serve a really important role in society. No, they don't. Yeah. That's, what do you, why? Why don't why? they? Sports used to play an important role in society. Oh, why is that? Today, we've over-glorified it. Over-glorified it? Yep. How so? There is no world where athletes are getting compensated the way they're getting compensated, but teachers and doctors are getting the way they're compensated. Bro, what are you? So when, when, at what point, what point was it no longer acceptable for you? When Jordan was getting paid thirty million a year? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? There's always going to be an anomaly here and there. Okay. What's league minimum in the NBA now? That's not, bro. That's uh, th- 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 answer the question. Huh? What's league minimum in the NBA? I mean, probably around eight hundred to one point two million or something. I don't okay, know. that's too much. League minimum should be four hundred, three hundred thousand. What do you mean, bro? That's literally capitalism. Like they did a, an amazing job growing the sport. Okay, sponsor. Clearly, people are paying for it. Yeah, no, they are. So I mean, it's <laughs> they're not taking money from people. People are willingly, advertisers are willingly giving it to them. I get it. You had a hot take. This is my hot take. I think athletes are overpaid. Athletes are over. Do you understand? How much money LeBron generates for like GDP in a city? Yeah. How are they overpaid? You know he's uh, he's very much underpaid. Uh-huh. Yeah. Go look at. I wonder if you could pull this up. Look at what happened to Cleveland's GDP when LeBron left Cleveland. Go, no, no, go I, look at I, that. I get that he brings in people spending money on it okay? all I, around I for all the businesses I get around. That. Yeah. I think a doctor keeping you alive should be worth more than that. Yeah, they, it should be. But who's gonna who's gonna pay for it though? Then that means we're all gonna have to pay our insurance companies more. Who's paying or, for it? Or we have a nationalized healthcare like Europe does. We should not be. Insurance is a fucking hustle. I don't know, man. I also like the fact that um, you know it keeps kids motivated and excited and in, involved in extracurricular activities. No, I think ki- for kids, sports Keeping, are fantastic. Yeah, and but what? What keeps them motivated, though? They want to be, they want to play like their favorite players. Yeah, I don't like that either. Let's be honest here. Statistically speaking, I, I, you're setting your kids up for failure. A help? No, no. You're introducing a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, no. And no, also, it, I, I play it's, sports it's too. The number, I get it. It's the number one way for kids to learn how to play with the team. I, I get that. And most people who play sports when they're younger develop 
that same tenacity in business, and it's a very good thing. I'm not downplaying the value to kids and bringing it up. Yeah. Okay. But but, but what yeah. I am saying is there are a lot of athletes who are wildly overpaid. Do you think LeBron James needs – if LeBron James is worth $200 million versus being a billionaire, you think that's equitable? What do you he, mean? he can still live just a good fucking lifestyle at $200 million. But bro, what are you saying? Listen, you're acting as if, like, he's not doing anything with his platform. He's also – Helping a lot of people along the way. Okay, but again, his platform. And he's also, and he also, like, for someone like him, I get it. He's 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 an exception, but he's also, like, started a school, which helps the people in this community. I'm not taking that away from him. But yeah, who's paying his the teachers in the community okay. far more. If LeBron James was 5'11 and was about a rune's weight, yeah. would he have that platform? Bro, no, obviously. But, look, you're also taking away a lot of, a lot of hard no, work. No, I'm not. No, 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 no. He worked his ass off to, to maintain. Yeah. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that he didn't do that. Yeah. But if it were not for the genetic gifts that he were granted, his hard work, all the hard work in the world would have not have gotten him there. I mean, there was a lot of odds stacked against him to also not make it. What fucking odds? Whoa. He was he was expected bro, to be an all-time great at 18 years old. What odds, bro? T- to stay on the right track and not get sucked into these communities that these okay. these guys are all are going of up those in? things would not have even been a thought had he not have been gifted amazing genetics. No, okay, obviously it does play a role, but that's not the the sole determining factor. Obviously, I'm not saying he, he could have been. It's not the sole determining factor, but it is a huge part of his opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, but look, he also, he. what are you pulling up, Odin? Just stats about, we were talking about, like, LeBron and the city and stuff like that. Oh, how much it's he. It's crazy, man. Like, yeah, he added a lot to the the. GDP of the of the city, there's no doubt about yeah, that. Yeah, it's Bars not. It's and restaurants not. grew by 13 percent in Cleveland, 23 percent in Miami. Um, yeah, and this is in, <laughs> and restaurants this is, shut down. 50 restaurants shut down after he left Cleveland. Look, it just bothers year. me that that these are the kind of things. There's there's very little utility in in a person's life of chasing down sports once they get into adulthood, other than staying in shape. Other than staying in shape and community, maybe? I think I think you're I think you're uh, in the minority here when it comes to when it comes to how people view sports. It brings a lot of people together. Yeah, and so let's let's okay here again, and I know it's gonna piss people off. It brings people together under what pretense? I mean, it's tribalism. Yeah, yeah, it does. People are people are tribal. So if you're mm-hmm. not tribal with with other things, you might be tribal about your sports or religion. Yeah. Or if you're not tribal or religion or, your or politics or your ho- yeah, yeah other hobbies like this is this is what people get into this is what they like and look if this is what it takes for you to be a good person go be the best goddamn Laker fan you could be I'm all for it I am not a very tribal human yeah <laughs> I am I am not that and this this is why I legitimately think I've got like a, d- a healthy degree of autism. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm, not gonna, I'm, not even gonna I'm, I'm just being dead ass serious. Where I know I'm weird. I have zero desire to. Oh God, I'm gonna try to make this as uninflammatory as possible. But I have zero desire for someone to be like, "Oh my God, you like BMWs? Me too. We should be friends." Fuck you. Yeah. I have zero desire for someone to be like. I love Jesus. You love Jesus. We should be friends. I see. I, this is this is what this is. I, I don't want to do that. Like, I get Chris, that. I, I want to be. Huh? I, I get that. But for for the, for the people out there that are that way, hey, I, whatever, good for you. No, not whatever. It's good. Good for you. I'm happy for you that you're you found more normal than me. That, Fine. That, no, it's not that you're more normal. I, I'm glad you found that thing for yourself, right? But, but why is but this? This, this is this is this is what makes no it exciting. Value in that. This is this is what makes it so cool. Okay, in, in my opinion. Okay, I think I was having this conversation with you, Odun, uh, a couple weeks ago. Like, how much is Steph Curry worth? How much is LeBron James worth? A lot. It'd be if I was worth that much money, it would be really hard for me to continue to get up and work and care so much. You could literally leave the sport and go make that same amount of money in whatever other investments you've already it wouldn't made. The be hard for me to do that at all. Okay, it wouldn't be hard for you to continue to wake up and still give it your all. You know how no. much? You know how much pain. These guys have to go through. Their bodies are constantly aching. Wouldn't hesitate at all. No. Because the only reason you get to that point doing doing this is because you love it and you love your life. Yeah. Yeah. So but he loves it. Yeah. And he loves no, his life. He, and the fact that he's still it, the purity of it is still it's so pure for him still that he cares. Not just him, but all of them. Right. 
is uh, and you're still showing up every day and you still love it this much, that's what makes it so cool. Yeah, but I mean, keep in mind too that to see somebody that passionate about something is really cool. Yeah, but passion can come come in or out, and for him. It could be passionate about the sport. It could be passionate about the business. It could be passionate passionate about being the greatest of all time. There's lots of driving underlying passions for him. Yeah. Fine. I don't knock him on that, and I'm not knocking what he does. All I'm saying is, I feel like you're attacking LeBron. No, I've I've seen a lot of kids, and I'll use basketball as a bigger example here. It can completely make your life, or it can completely destroy your life, depending on how long you hold on to that dream. Yeah, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's also like there's so many experiences that i've you know come across in my lifetime because of it right like i wouldn't have met my wife if it wasn't through basketball for basketball i don't believe that i believe it it's your it's arun's sister yeah basketball made me meet him did he though it did yes okay well well that's the only reason we know you too that's the only reason why i know you that first time remember when we kicked his ass yep i don't recall that (laughs) Shocker. Really, get, this guy, get this guy off the court, bro. This guy's 6'6". Six, six. What a waste. 6'5". Huh. 6'5". <laughs> yeah. Good hot take, though. I like it. I just I don't see the, I don't see the value. I see it. I don't want to be tribal. I want to be alone on an island. Alone on an island? That seems... That With seems some branching amino acids and a cold plunge. It really seems sad. Doesn't it seem sad to you? No. That's what he wants. You want to be alone? Not, not alone. I just, you know... You just want you want to be alone with your wife and Carter. I, I don't want to want a crowd. I don't want a crowd. I got limited time, man. I want to use that time to be with my family, and I don't want to be around like a bunch of people who don't give a shit and who are all trying to relate to me no, because we have a similar interest. But that that's not authentic to me, bro. You like the lions? I like the lions too, bro. Yeah, go lions. Like, fuck you. <laughs> you know, like who are you? Yeah, you just shit on Detroit like that. That's I just watched the Eddie Murphy movie, and he's he's, <laughs> he's from Detroit. But I'm, you know, I'm just saying, like, you know, I don't like. Okay, what about this... what about the car space? You like you want to take the car to SEMA? All those people that showing up to SEMA that don't have a car to present there, you're gonna be like, get the fuck away from my car. No. Okay, but you guys share similar interests. Do I want to? Do I want like to take your num- mobile number and go home and like call you after and be like, "Hey, man, that one car, I love you, bro." No, it's not. It doesn't. I have, don't. It doesn't have to be everybody. But what you could meet uh, someone else there that I mean, that... I'm not dating anymore at this point in my life, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm done. I feel with like that. we're dating. No, I don't. I just I'm ca- I'm tapped out. My resume's my team's full. <laughs> my team's full. You know, yeah. like like I'm good. Like you're, you're if not... the spot opens up in the roster, I'll I'll, I'll roll you in. See, you got to See, you're using it. You're we'll using have tryouts. It <laughs> you know, but I don't. Nope. I don't need you right now. Free agency. We are in off season. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Go train on your own. If All I right. need to pick you up, I'll give you a call. You Until get, then, you're in the G League. Might get a ten day. Uh, no, you probably won't. No. Yeah. You're just gonna sign somebody. You're not gonna give them a ten day contract first. Very few players go to the G League, get a ten day contract, and stay in the league. Yeah. Very few. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I mean, those are the elite teams. So I'm just gonna give you two, three, ten days, and then I'm gonna sign you. Yeah, they won it all. You really gotta earn this spot. Yeah, Adam. Adam, Adam, I'm not a fan. <laughs> what What are you gonna do one day when Adam comes home? He's like, Dad, mm. I want to go to this Division Seventeen school. <laughs> Where are we moving, son? And I want to play basketball. No, no, no. At that point, no. Look, you got if you use you got you got to use the talent towards education. If what it, What if he says to you, like, Dad, like I I'm gonna get an education. Uh, prove to me what. But I'm gonna go to this school oh, and why? I'm gonna play basketball. Okay, prove to me what education you're gonna get there. What are they known for? Underwater basket weaving. No. Well, I know. No, it don't make money. I'm, I'm. What do you mean, don't make money? No, it don't make. Money. Basketball makes money. <laughs> no, no, no. But you're not making NBA like that, son. Division seventeen is still in divisions. No, why don't you go be a walk on at UCI? Can't be a walk on at UCI. Sure you can. No, I can't. They can. I'll make. I'll make sure you do. <laughs> yeah. That alumni money, boy. <laughs> alumni money. <laughs> well, in any event, look, that's exactly it, right? Like everybody wants their kids to learn all these valuable lessons until their kid learns those lessons and doesn't want to give up on what should be a dream they should give up on. Yeah. No, no, look, it's going to be, I'm going to make sure, uh, for my kid's sake anyways, actually I was having this conversation with Orun on the way over here. Um, so Aria, my daughter, is really naturally gifted in soccer, okay? And um, I'm like, man, this, but he's, I, can, I can tell in the next couple of years it's going to get real competitive really quick. And um, I don't, she, she's naturally gifted, but she doesn't enjoy it like that, right? Where she's in it right now because we want her to be healthy, doing something active, you know, extracurricular. Mm-hmm. I was like, what I really want to do is I want to push her into golf, introduce golf to her, 
right? Because it would be a really cool way for us to have our one-on-one alone time, you know. Where you can play a sport you like. With her. Imagine four or five hours with her on a golf course. Imagine the conversations that we could have. While you're playing the sport you want to play. Yeah, with her. Yeah. And when you bought off on this shit? No, I'm saying hopefully hopefully she likes it. I mean, I'm not saying I'm going to force her to do it, but I'm going to introduce it and hopefully it sticks. I just have to wait for the right time. Yeah, I said volleyball, and he was like, no. Yeah, you bro, ain't, not playing no volleyball. volleyball. You can't get that, volleyball, you can't get that booty up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> she's not wearing those volleyball he shorts, He's not a bro. sand sport. Here. You know how much body hair he's got? <laughs> I, remember the, I, remember, I, remember the, I remember the boys going to the volleyball, the girls' games, bro. No, hell You no. come home exfoliating in the shower for four hours, you have to go out and sand out. <laughs> <laughs> bro, beach volleyball? Who does that? It's hard, man. Arun? Oh, I did that years ago when I was... Nah, bro. If it was up to him, he would do it every day. I remember that was when he was actually logging the workouts. Hey, the next time you go do it, let's take a bet on how much sand you bring back on your belly button. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying at least a gram. <laughs> Were you diving, bro? Yeah. I mean, you got the cushion for it. Good for you, man. I, I would, I'm, never going, I'm never going all out on a beach volleyball. Yeah, you blow out an Achilles easily. Easy. Yeah, you're gonna need a whole lot more than transcend and fix that problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't do that. Somebody's like, "Hey, man, you want to pick a ball?" No, I don't want to play basketball with you. Why? No, no pick a ball. I won't do it. No, hell no. Yeah, man, I think I'm done with that too. Yeah, I ain't. No, half court only. I'm, no, no court. Why? I'll go sit in the corner. No. Do you yeah. still play with those uh, those guys in Anaheim? Those dads? Yeah. No. Ever since the Achilles injury. Which you've been taking because they, I don't believe you're taking any. They were running. They were running. They were running full court. They I got it was misrepresented, bro. They told me halves. I show up one day. They're like, not enough people showed up, so we're just gonna run full. I was like, what the fucking bait and switch, bro? I don't want to. I don't want to run full. Wait, that doesn't even make sense. Not enough people showed up. Because they that have means, that means they had like eleven or twelve. And yeah, not like instead of thirty instead of sixteen. Yeah, right. Because they'll do four on four on one half, four on four on another half, and winners loser courts, right? And then I think only like twelve people showed up, so they ran fulls, and I was like, "Come well, on!" Two, the two poor assholes who were sitting on the sidelines watching for the first game. Yeah, and you know me, bro. Like I was getting the competitive juices were flowing. I was talking shit too, bro. I, I leaned into one guy. I felt so bad because a lot of these guys have never really played played before, so the the movements aren't really there. And I hit somebody with like a drop step, lowered my shoulder, like gave him a bump, created space, and I hit him with the floater. And the guy went flying, right? He wasn't expecting a bump. Like, nobody bumped like that. And I bumped him, and everybody was like, oh. Like, they thought I was, like, trying to hurt him. I was like, hey, are you okay? I'm so sorry. I thought you were going to absorb the contact, bro. Well, like, come on. Like, I can't play with these guys. So you're bullying dads now? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's messed up, man. I hope this guy listens to the show. I'm like, yeah, motherfucker. Arun, you would have been so proud, bro. You would have been like, damn, you still got it. <laughs> I never forget the day that one European kid started fucking with Rune and I laid him out into a wall. Oh, oh, I heard about that story. Yeah, he got checked hard. And he looked at me like, why? See, those are, <laughs> I, like those sto- I like those stories, though. We were young. I mean, it was fun. You had, like, less fucks to give. Yeah, those days have come and gone, brother. Yeah. Now I'm just trying not to get hurt. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's, uh, let's call it a wrap. Rune, I know you don't know how to use the equipment back there, so if you need <laughs> Help and turning everything off. I'll I'll help you out after we gotta leave the room here. Okay? Hopefully, all three red lights are on. Yeah. 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 Oh, do you got anything? Nope. Christopher. Yes, sir. All right. Good night, everybody. Okay, bye.